Zero. So welcome to this new episode of the Kitty TV. This time we will focus on a very important topic, which is going to be uh, on uh, the MBSC uh, aspect of uh, of Kitty and, and partners also. And this 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 Kitty TV is called Dynamic Excel Interface for MBSC Model Authoring. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the context that is going to be shown today. So we're going to uh, showcase and introduce DASA System Partner, uh, which is uh, Cybernet MBSC that will introduce their Maple MBSC based solutions that help connect engineering tasks into the system models in Teamwork Cloud without the subject matter expert knowing anything about that systems engineering, if I'm correct. They simply add their knowledge into the model to provide consistent information in the structure expected by the systems engineer throughout a familiar user Excel user interface. And of course, I'm speaking under control of my technical expert here. Um, I will welcome today. So first, Paul Gossens, uh, he's uh, VP and BSE Solutions uh, and uh, Barani Mohat, uh, Product Manager at MapleSoft representing Cybernet and BSE. Detail if I'm correct about the naming. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And uh, Solius Pavalkis, which is an MBSC technical expert at uh, Daso uh, System in Katia. So, um, as usual, the Katia TV webinar is being held on the community in the post where you are uh, right now. Uh, and it gives you the capacity to interact uh, in live or at the end, maybe, uh, to uh, interact with our subject matter experts throughout the chat. The chat pane that you see below so you don't hesitate to ask your questions if you have any and uh we'll be happy to answer it you can also ask it afterward watching the webinar in replay uh and you can and we will be uh able afterward to answer it uh of course there will be a little bit of delay there so uh thank you again uh paul solius and barani thank you very much for being there and uh i'll let you uh, the floor and I will start to share the presentation. Thanks a lot, sir. So let me start with this uh, uh, image. It's actually coming from National Defense and Industry Association for the system engineering um, uh, in the connection to uh, other engineering disciplines. As we see here, everyone sits at the same table, right? Uh, including system engineering. So especially system engineering is responsible for connecting the dots. So if we do it, if we enable it with model based as it should be. So um, as all other engineering industry disciplines are already model based. So we enable that connectivity, right? Uh, through the models. And uh, that gives us uh, uh, opportunity to digitally actually integrate the disciplines uh, from the beginning of the project through the life cycle of the project, as you can see here, going from the preliminary design review to uh, detailed design review and so. So uh, today we'll talk about that uh, if you store the data actually in the model, it's not necessarily that only system engineers contribute to the data and actually see the data. It's actually multiple roles and how to enable this is actually with the most simple and uh, the most common interface as Excel, dynamically accessing the data and getting in and out uh, information with the most simple interface, but at the same time dynamically, and we'll explain how and show how. Okay, do you want to carry on? Okay, well, thanks a lot, uh, Solius. Um, so um, that just to you know again introduce uh, myself, Paul Goosens, and uh, have uh, Barani Mohan, who will be taking you through a live demo of uh, Maple MBSC. I'm just going to kind of set the t uh, set the scene in the context of uh, uh, of what Solius was talking about, and certainly from the um, perspective of implementing a digital transformation of the engineering process. You know, systems engineering, model-based systems engineering, is very much central to that in terms of. Uh, cap capturing the goals of the um, of the product design, and of course, systems engineers need uh, the input from from many uh, different stakeholders in order to uh, to get the, the rich set of information that's required to to do the design work. So, from our perspective uh, and in, in our engagements with um, uh, companies and customers that have, are, are implementing 
MBSE process. There are three categories of, uh, of, uh, of people that we need to deal with. First one, obviously, is the systems engineer. Um, and you know, they, they uh, appreciate the fact that uh, using a tool like MBSC, uh, Maple MBSC can really accelerate the introduction of uh, MBSC as part of their, their, their digital transformation uh, strategies. Uh, largely because it's, um, they, they, they can get the information that they need at the, at the level of detail and at, at, in the structure that is required uh, from the, the subject matter experts and other stakeholders in the, in the, uh, in the organization. Um, added to that, um, by providing a, a, um, an Excel-based tool to do this, that actually reduces the resistance that's typically inherent in, uh, in trying to in, 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 uh, introduce new processes, new tools into the, into the process. So they actually get, they get a double benefit from that. The other uh, um, category of stakeholder in, in, in this is, is, is the subject matter expert or the, or the end user uh, that, uh, of our tool. Uh, now they have a way to be able to um, you know, capture the knowledge that they that they're generating from their activities, and bring it into the um, uh, into the systems model in a way that uh, it doesn't impose any particular uh, requirements for knowledge of uh, of systems engineering or, or knowledge of the tools. They just simply use Excel to do that. Um, this not only engenders um, um, colla easy collaboration between the, 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 the subject matter expert, experts and the systems engineer, it actually allows all the various stakeholders to be able to uh, collaborate with each other uh, through the systems model. And then the third um, uh, uh, personality that uh, uh, obviously we, we work with is the, is the program director. Uh, the, the, the person is overseeing all of this uh, activity I want to make sure that uh, there, are, there are any risks or un, uh, unbudgeted costs are kept to a minimum. Um, and certainly by providing a tool like Maple MBC to do that, this really does help to uh, ensure that the, the, the success of, of the project. So how do we do that? Well, um, Maple MBSC is, is essentially a uh, synchronized bi-directional um, connection into the systems model that connects into uh, into Excel uh, at the front end. Uh, this provides for, for the end user a very familiar Excel interface for viewing, entering, and modifying system, the system design information that then can then be automatically sent into the systems model. So any changes that are made in the systems model at the Excel end, that the integrity of that information is kept into the into the systems model. Um, we provide um, tight integration where with the, uh, the, the, the Cameo um, tool chain to, uh, through the Teamwork Cloud. Um, and because the, the, the kinds of applications that um, uh, Maple MBSE is used for, uh, it has to be a very open, very flexible um, uh, capability to so pro provide a, uh, a powerful um, back end technology. To, to, to allow uh, customizable um, tasks or customizable front ends for, stat, for, for tasks to be readily um, developed and, and rapid customization of, the, uh, of the, the tool at the front end to make sure that the end user gets the best possible experience. Types of applications we get involved in. Uh, this is just a snapshot. To, it's just an example of some of the use cases: uh, ICDs, um, uh, trade analysis, FMEAs. That kind of that, uh, the, these are the kinds of things that are uh, uh, that are used quite extensively with Maple MBSC. What I would say to you is much further to that. It's basically, it's any task that that is already being performed in a spreadsheet can be um, uh, can be uh, developed as an application. Yeah, for, for with, with Maple MBSE, um, probably the biggest uh, area that we're involved in is just being able to give a tool uh, to the SMEs in order to be able to apply their knowledge and their skills to generate the information at the level that's required uh, for the um, uh, for the systems model. An example of this would be uh, certainly their decomposition, functional decomposition in particular, uh, since we'll be showing that um, in a moment. Um, and uh, and then you know there's things where you've got very large lists of um, of information uh, equipment lists for example they tend to be reside in very flat files in uh, in an excel spreadsheet um, with no really explicit um, hierarchical structure 
we can actually uh, use our tools to very easily bring the equipment list in, apply that hier hierarchical structure, and then embed it into the systems model, uh, into the systems model, much much quickly, more quickly than say trying to import it into into Cameo and then trying to figure out the structures. And then even for the systems engineers, um, Maple MD MBSE pr provides this very handy tool to just be able to do things like you know structural analysis of the model or traceability or impact analysis um, uh, of that model. So that's really just a really just to give you a sense of the kinds of uh, uh, range of applications that we can use with um, Maple MBSC. Um, so that's really just, just me giving you a bit of an overview of, um, uh, of of what the tool is about and why it's important and why it brings value to the uh, uh, to, to the process. But now, now I'd like to pass it over to Barani, who can take you through a demonstration of the tool just to show, show you the. Uh, um, you know, the, the passing through from one um, uh, from the systems engineer to the design engineer who uses Maple MVSC to do the decomposition and then bring the system uh, model. So, with that, uh, I'll pass it over to Barani. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Okay, so uh, as Paul mentioned, the use case that we are going to see today with Maple MVSC is functional decomposition. Uh, so basically, functional decomposition, uh, it's something that uh, we expect the system to do. So we identify the functions that uh, we want the system to do. Uh, we break down these functions into uh, sub-functions and so on. And we, we will see an activity tracker or a fitness tracker example. Uh, the basic function the, we expect from the uh, activity tracker is going to be to track daily activity or to track your uh, heart rate, sleep cycle, and etc. So in, in terms of functional decomposition, uh, what we expect to do first is we want to identify the lower level functions. And we want to break down these lower level functions in, into uh, basic functions, where you can assign uh, the functions to a certain component that will be performing that function. And we identify the inputs and, and the outputs for functions. Uh, then we allocate the functions to the components. And we want to also finally verify if uh, the, the functions that we identify meets the system requirements and so on. So basically, this is what uh, the, the functional decomposition uh, workflow is going to be like. And uh, this is important because we want to identify uh, all the functions that is expected of the system. Uh, say it could be defined as a requirement or we identify a new function uh, and, and so on. Uh, and also, we want to uh, create different alternative uh, architectures to identify uh, which uh, architecture will, will best suit our need and, and so on with, based on trade studies and so on. So th this is kind of to give you an overview of what a functional decomposition is. And then uh, with Maple MBC, what Maple MBC can help a user who is not familiar with, say, the modeling language or, or the modeling tool is uh, we, we can capture uh, the different functions from the user, uh, decompose the function into sub-function, and allocate it to different components, and so on. So uh, as Paul mentioned, uh, what we are going to see is we are going to see just tables or, or matrices in an Excel worksheet. And a subject matter expert is going to work with these views to uh, interact with the model directly. So and, and once the interaction is captured by Maple MBC, uh, this information will be reflected back into your model as SML elements itself. So it, it's going to be captured as activities or actions that you are going to create using Cameo or, or with Magic Draw. Uh, we can capture all the relations, uh, the traceabilities with, with different dependencies and so on. So uh, for, for a user to interact through Cameo or, or Maple MBSE, you, you will not see any difference in terms of how the model is being built and so on. And uh, in terms of the workflow that we are going to see for uh, the demo, uh, so there will be two uh, user roles, as Paul mentioned. So the, the system engineer who is familiar with the uh, MBSC process, they know the modeling uh, tool, they know the modeling language, they create this whole uh, MBSC ecosystem. And then we have the system experts. Uh, system experts, they, they are users who, uh, whose daily activity is not to interact with uh, the MBSE model or, or to interact with the SysML model and so on. So for these users who are not familiar with uh, the, the modeling interface, they can use Maple MBSE's uh, Excel interface to uh, contribute uh, it to the model. So specifically for today, 
we are going to see how a system expert can identify different functions uh, or review the function that is already in the model. We will break down uh, the function that we identified into sub functions and we will relate the function to uh, requirements and also to components that will perform this function. And once th this workflow is done, I am going to uh, save my changes to the, the model and we will use Cameo to review the model uh, to see how the changes that we did uh, within the Excel interface is being reflected as uh, systemal elements in, in, in uh, your, your project. So uh, before I, I open MapleMBAC, I already have the model here open in Cameo. So you're, you're able to see that we have certain function that, that's already defined in the model with requirements. Uh, you can see uh, the components that is already in the model. There is a certain hierarchy relation that uh, that specifies how uh, each requirement is related to a component or, or uh, different activities and so on. So here I have already uh, launched Maple MBC and, and connected to the same model. So the model that I open in uh, Cameo and in Maple MBC, they both uh, reside in the Teamwork Cloud Server. So that's why on, on the top of the Excel bar, uh, you are able to see that we are connected to Teamwork Cloud, uh, the project that we are working with, and so on. Uh, so this worksheet is just an uh, introduction to uh, the subject matter expert to say uh, what each worksheet is about. For example, the refine uh, requirement to function worksheet. Uh, this is where user can identify different function based on the requirement that is already in the model. Uh, and then decompose the function and finally allocate the function to certain component. Again, that, that's already in the model. So you can see how different customized view uh, can help the user to interact directly and, and uh, easily with the system model. So here, uh, say, based on some of the requirement, for example, say there is a requirement to track steps. So I'm going to create a function to track steps. Now, uh, what MapleMBAC will do is we have created a new function or uh, or uh, activity uh, if we relate it to some L. And we can now uh, relate the track steps that we identify to the requirement here. So I'm going to say that uh, this is, again, just to maintain the traceability and, and to link uh, the functions that we identify or the sub function to the requirement from which uh, we, we initially uh, uh, refine the function to. So once you, you update a worksheet or if you uh, create a new element in the worksheet, all the other worksheets are also updated uh, respectively. So here uh, you can see the new function appear uh, in, in the functional decomposition worksheet too. So I'm going to uh, create new uh, hierarchy or, or new decomposition or sub functions for the track steps. I'm accessing the track steps and I'm going to say that uh, some of the functions uh, to track steps is I, I want to identify the altitude so that I could see, uh, determine certain activity if the user is uh, running or if they are climbing steps and so on. So I'm going to include a new function called find altitude. And then uh, this creates a, a new function called uh, find altitude. So now again, I'm going to uh, create another sub function for track steps. Uh, this is going to be to find pressure. In a few more functions, uh, example to determine activity. Another function, finally, save to track steps. I also want to uh, store this information for data and so on. So uh, at this point, what I have done is I have just created uh, four different sub functions for the track steps. Uh, I also want to uh, create a complete hierarchy saying that uh, the, the main function or the, or the top level function is to track daily activity and rest everything are sub functions for it. So uh, I, I'm going to say that track daily activity uh, will de or the track steps will decompose the track daily activity. So for track daily activity, I'm going to include track steps. So you can see uh, here automatically the, the hierarchy is being shown because we already created the hierarchy between uh, track steps and four other functions. So finally, uh, using the allocation matrix, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate the functions that we identified to a component that already exists in the model. 
for example uh, track steps this is going to be done by say the tracker subsystem and uh, the altitude is going to be determined by the uh, accelerometer pressure uh, by the uh, barometric pressure sensor determine activity so an processor application is going to uh, identify the activity store data is going to be allocated to the storage unit so again you can see that it, it was very simple and you, you uh, do not see any complication of the sysml uh, language here within the excel worksheet so i have already made my changes uh, or i have completed my changes that i want to include to the model i'm going to save my changes to the server to do this i'm just going to uh, double click on the save button uh, we usually get a commit to uh, team workflow dialog box i'm going to say add a new functions and okay so we have moved to the latest revision you you can notice from the top of the title bar we started with the revision 24 now we are at 25 and here uh, to see the latest changes i'm going to update my model and you you can notice that here uh, in in the list of uh, activities or, or in the list of functions we do not have track steps here so i'm going to update my project so once the update is done uh, you can see all, all the elements that we added along with the relation will appear in, in the model. So here, uh, now you can see track steps uh, to determine activity and so on. I'll just include a new diagram so that we can see uh, the, the different functions, the relations and so on. Here, uh, daily act we, we related uh, the track steps to daily activity. So, track steps, in altitude, pressure, store data, determine activity. So, I'm just going to drag and drop this element uh, in, into the model here. So, here you can see that uh, the track daily activity now as a decomposition to track steps, which again has four other function or, or sub functions. Uh, we also related this to certain components like the uh, accelerometer, barometric sensor, uh, storage unit, tracker, and okay, and if I drag and drop these elements, you're going to see these relation also, like their allocation uh, and how the fine pressure is allocated to the barometric sensor, storage to the storage unit, and so on. So this is how Maplin Basic can uh, capture the right information into the model you can also notice that uh, nowhere in in our excel interface we mentioned that uh, the relation has to go into a certain package or uh, the new activities that we identified has to go into a certain package and so on so everything is predetermined by the uh, system expert or the system engineer that uh, which part of the model should be exposed to the user uh, what information should be captured and sent back to the model and so on Rani, I think we'll just for sake of time, I think we'll we'll, we'll stop there and leave your screen yep. up. We've got a few questions coming up. Um, okay. So um, thanks a lot, Rani. Um, if you have any questions, please um, do put them into uh, into in the question screen. Um, uh, so, Cyril, are you the one that's going to be um, moderating that? Um, yeah, it, uh, we are. Um it's um we just wait a little bit so thank you very much for the presentation Jeremy, guys mm -hmm. and uh do, do, do you wish to, to, to keep the screen on the on the screen i think it would be a good idea um i, I know solius had some questions perhaps you, should, perhaps you can start start everything off yeah you can go ahead Solius. sure yeah okay so um i have a question uh, what it takes to set up solution for excel interface to the uh, cloud timor cloud uh, it's a good question. Uh, so initially, you need to create the configuration file. So as a system engineer uh, who is familiar with the uh, modeling uh, project, they know the uh, the model structure. So they use the SysML knowledge to create a file. So we call that as a configuration file. So uh, the system engineer sets up the configuration file. Uh, it, it's based on a query path expression. Which is basically querying your model and, and uh, mentioning like which part of the model has to be exposed to the user and so on. 
And that's it? Yeah, that, that's it. That so sounds a whole new webinar. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds impressive that it's so quick right but <clears throat> so i have another question what's the learning uh, curve for the new user so i think everyone knows excel you know but uh, is there anything else they need to learn here uh so for an the user who is going to interact through excel it, it's pretty easy uh there isn't much they they just note uh they just note uh, need to know like certain menus, like how to uh, launch Maple MBC, connect to a uh, team workload model and, and how to save it. But uh, th that's all they need to know. Uh, there is a bit of a learning curve for the system engineer who's going to interact uh, with, or, or to create the configuration file. But again, that depends on, on uh, the individual. So if they are already familiar with uh, so the SysML language, creating profile and, and uh, like say, uh, specifically, with, with if they know how to work with the generic tables in, in Cameo or Magic Draw, it, it's pretty easy to use the same queries with Maple in BAC2. I think, okay. from my perspective, just from from using the tool, um, the, the main uh, the main thing that's uh, from an end user's perspective, it's just knowing and understanding hierarchical structures. You know, there's there's some knowledge of the structure that's required, but the but the inter interface kind of walks you through that. Yeah, that's, that's very good. Uh, uh, is, I have another question. Is there a consistency check uh, if user enters incorrect, uh, uh, some, does something in, incorrectly? Yeah, so uh, like, like I mentioned, the system engineer who's going to create the configuration file, they already are, are going to predetermine what information has to be added to the model. So here, uh, for example, uh, the only information that the user could add through this view is to maybe they could add new functions or new requirements and create a certain type of dependency, which is the refine. Uh, of course, there is no spell check, but uh, in terms of the model consistency, it, it's already predetermined in the configuration file. So once you define the scope, the user cannot uh, change or, or create an element with, with inconsistency and, and so on. That's impressive, actually. Um... A more more difficult question uh, is there any you know experience uh, or information uh, how this interface uh, improve and the MBSC adoption in organization? Um, well, only, I, I can probably answer that. I mean, really, only anecdotally, and of course, you know, um, we we we've been uh, promoting Maple MBSCs. Well, this is our fourth, actually, fifth year. Uh, uh, la uh, last year I won't count, <laughs> um, but uh, so it's about four or five years we've been doing this, and uh, I would say that, that our customers are either uh, at a level of implementation where they're just not ready to talk about uh, things. Uh, those that are <laughs> are typically working on highly sensitive um, uh, projects and uh, are reluctant to, to go public on it. Um, that said, you know I think. Um, you know, it's, uh, I don't think there's any secret that uh, J JPL has been a very good um, early customer for us and, um, and certainly been very active in the Open MBE with, with uh, uh, Open MBE initiative with, uh, with, with uh, Maple MBSC. Um, so uh, the only thing I can point to is on our website, we actually do have a case study that was done with uh, Nissan. Um, and, uh, you know, there's some good things there. They, they, they could certainly see somewhere between a two times and four times improvement in productivity. Uh, but the biggest thing, the biggest thing was the reduction in errors because those things can kill you. <laughs> and um, so a very, very significant reduction um, in uh, errors being introduced into the model. Very typically, these weren't structural errors. They would be things like spelling mistakes and stuff like that. So that, that, that's, that's pretty important. You can find that out on our, uh, on our website. <laughs> I have one more actually question. So what would be your recommendations on the typical roles which would be first candidates to adopt a, a lightweight interface uh, for the system model update? I, I mean, I can talk, I mean, I've kind of touched on that in, in our presentation, really. I mean, the, the roles for the, for the kinds of work that are being done are uh, certainly folks that are um, that are doing um, interface connection documents, uh, uh, interface control documents, ICDs, or the uh, requirements behind it. 
um, anywhere where you've got a high level requirement or a high, high, high level functional de description that needs to be broken down into something that can be um, actionable and testable. <laughs> um, these are the kind, the, these are the, 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 the most likely candidates. That's where you're going to see the most value in, um, in, in, in using our tools. Thank you. Any questions coming from from our audience, Cyril? No, for now, there's no no questions. Okay, I think I think the uh, the questions can generally come from uh, from replays when we, when they come and they, uh, they ask questions yeah. throughout the throughout the, the days and the, and sometimes even even the weeks. So okay. there might be some questions that that uh, that will be uh, provided uh, to you afterward. Okay, that's great. Okay, well, if anybody wants to find out more about uh, Maple Leaf ESC and, and contact us, follow up uh, either myself or, or, or Barani, um, go to our website, maplembse.com. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Solius. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much, Barani, for uh, participating to this uh, a specific episode of the of the KT TV, and thank you very much for the demonstration and to explain us uh, how we can use the dynamic Excel interface for the MBSC uh, topic, which is a very important topic for for DS and KTF. Okay. Have uh, all everyone a good day. Again, the, the webinar will be in replay on the KTF uh, user community, and um, the audience. You guys can all go uh, to uh, the KTF user community to watch the replay as you want and again please don't hesitate to ask your questions and we will transfer them to our technical experts so thank you very much and we wish you all uh, a very good day thanks a lot yeah. goodbye thanks a lot thank you Bye. thank you so much Bye.